How wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss yet another cosmic mystery, but this time possibly a resolution to one of the more recent mysteries when it comes to some really bizarre, very bright explosions that nobody could explain for approximately 8 years. And specifically explosions that you see right here. This was the first such detection back in 2018 of an explosion that's now actually referred to as the cow. More officially, AT 2018 cow. An explosion that was believed to be a supernova at first, but that did not make sense almost right away. And this officially became a mystery when scientists discovered even more of these events, with a handful of them eventually getting cute names like the Camel, Koala, and the Tasmanian Devil. And so in this video we're going to discuss exactly what scientists believe is happening here, and what these very strange explosions, officially referred to as F-Bots, potentially represent. Because this recent discovery from 2025 seems to provide one exciting explanation based on recent evidence. But first let's actually discuss why they're so bizarre and why they're so unusual. So here's a picture kind of showing us a normal supernova, a gamma ray burst, and these very strange fast blue optical transients with more extreme examples known as LF bots or luminous fast blue optical transients. And in essence, these are incredibly bright but also extremely brief flashes of blue and ultraviolet light that usually appear out of nowhere and then gradually fade away. And since the analysis of the first one in 2018, astronomers debated whether these are unusual types of supernova or something entirely different. Mostly because, once again, their emissions and their overall progression was extremely different from a supernova. But based on some of the recent studies, that as always you can find in the description and that we're going to be discussing today, including a major observation of a record-breaking F-Bot, the one referred to as AT2024 WPP, also known as the WASP, now suggests that this is definitely not an exploding star, but something a little bit more bizarre and a little bit more unusual. But I guess first, so what are these F-Bots and L-F-Bots, and why did they create this bizarre mystery? Well, first of all, most things in space usually take a very long time to change. But when it comes to these transients, things are a little bit different. A typical transient is usually some kind of a very bright flash that changes in mere days, weeks, or sometimes months. And a typical supernova usually stays bright for several months and slowly fades into obscurity, leaving behind a supernova remnant. But a fast blue optical transient seems to be very, very quick. They usually reach the peak brightness in less than 10 days and also produce a very distinct blue color for weeks afterwards. And on top of this, they also seem to be incredibly rare. Normal supernovae are seen in a lot of different locations quite frequently, but only approximately 0.1% of all of these explosions seems to resemble an F-Bot. So essentially 1 in 1000. Yet because they are so bright and because they are visible over hundreds of millions of light years, they seem to be pretty powerful and are caused by something very unique. But because they also usually happen randomly and are assigned random names by the automated telescopic systems, most of them received very cute animal nicknames like Koala, Tasmanian Devil, and the Finch. Or of course, the original Cow. And the new detection is no different. This is the Wasp. Mostly because the last three letters are WPP. But what makes this detection so special and so unique is that it seems to be the most luminous F-Bot. This is about 5 to maybe even 10 times brighter than the original cow and seems to represent something ridiculously powerful. As you can see in this image, it actually outshines the galaxy where it happened. And so because it was so bright, astronomers were able to get a lot of data from this and especially the most detailed ultraviolet curve recorded for any such event previously. So this actually provided scientists with a lot of detailed data. And while initial explanations before this event was detected suggested that maybe this is some kind of a very special supernova involving a lot of nickel, and specifically nickel-56. Basically it was powered by radioactive decay of nickel-56 that produced all of this bizarre blue light and a lot of ultraviolet. But for this object the math did not add up. In the first 45 days it seems to have generated way more energy than anticipated and way more than would be allowed by nickel-56 radioactive decay. In terms of actual numbers, it generated approximately 10 to the power of 51 erg of energy, or approximately 100 times more than a normal supernova. And this was of course in a very short time, approximately 10 days. And in order to produce this energy, 10% of solar mass would have to be converted into energy in just a few weeks. Exactly how this would happen in a typical supernova 
is basically unknown. Here's roughly what its light curve looked like in a period of several days. And while the sheer amount of energy released in this case ruled out any normal stellar explosion, this had to be something entirely different. And the only thing that kind of made sense was a black hole, and specifically an event we refer to as a TDE, Tidal Disruption Event. And so if not a supernova, this is the only other event that makes sense. But unlike a typical TDE, this one seems to be very extreme. Although just as a quick side note, a typical TDE is essentially when a black hole spaghettifies or destroys a star, which then releases a huge amount of energy. We've talked about some of the recent discoveries of these events in one of the videos in the description. And so here the black hole's gravity is so strong that it shreds the star that gets too close, producing enormous emissions. But in a normal TDE, we don't expect anything like this. Mostly because usually they happen in the center of various galaxies and involve supermassive black holes that do take their sweet time. So usually this is something that lasts much longer. Instead, this seems to involve some kind of a black hole that's maybe hundred solar masses, or essentially a black hole we refer to as an intermediate mass black hole. And a black hole that completely shredded its partner that was possibly in its orbit. And the star that makes sense the most is some kind of a really massive star, like a Wolf Rea star, which is usually extremely hot and contains a lot of mass, but has already lost most of its hydrogen. Which is the only explanation that makes sense, because we don't really see a lot of hydrogen here, yet we do see very powerful emissions. But then I guess the question is, so what exactly happened in this system before the collision, and how did the system evolve? And this system potentially had a relatively exciting history. Here the black hole started by sucking the material away from the partner for a pretty long time. It was basically surrounded by a halo of gas from the star, as all of this gas was sucked away over time. But the star was also slowly approaching the black hole closer and closer, until it finally started to fall apart and was basically torn apart completely when it got really close. Which then led to all of this material slamming into the older gas that was forming all of the halo around the system, which created massive shocks and a lot of heat, producing intense ultraviolet and blue emissions. Which right now is the only explanation that kind of makes sense, explaining both the luminosity and the emissions. And right now there are at least two pieces of evidence that seem to support this. First of all, the near-infrared emissions, which we discovered using the Gemini South Telescope, suggest that there was a dramatic excess. This is actually the second time ever that so much infrared light was observed coming from an F-bot. And for scientists, this implies that the light is being reprocessed by a shell of dust or gas surrounding this object. Basically, it's really the dust that produces all of this infrared. On top of this, the X-ray observations from New Star and Swift observatories reveal an unusual X-ray bump that seems to peak approximately 50 days after the flash. And this type of an observation is usually seen in mini systems containing accretion disks. Or basically systems containing active black holes, like for example in centers of galaxies, that involve destroyed stars. This is not something we expect from a typical supernova. Likewise, radio observations seem to suggest some kind of a jet of material traveling at 40% the speed of light. And here, when the jets hit surrounding gas, they generate radio waves in a very specific wavelength which is once again detectable in this event. And so here the evidence points at this being a very rare event involving a medium-sized black hole and some kind of a massive star. With this discovery being important because it bridges the gap between different types of cosmic cataclysms and suggests that many similar events, such as the cow event, might be one of the best ways for us to physically discover intermediate mass black holes, which are notoriously difficult to identify and have been actually a mystery for a very long time. But other recent studies of similar events discovered that sometimes they actually happen not once, but even several times. Here the event detected in 2022, referred to as the Tasmanian Devil, has been flaring up repeatedly, sometimes even months after the initial explosion. And this flare-up is a direct confirmation that this is not a supernova, but instead does involve some kind of a stellar remnant that seems to be continuously orbiting around a central object, such as a black hole, and that's continuously losing a lot of energy that then creates these powerful explosions. In other words, some of these events might produce additional explosions, assuming the remnant survived and comes close to the black hole in the future. And on top of this, in the coming years, there are going to be at least two additional ultraviolet missions, specifically Ultrasat that's going to be launched in 2027 and UVAX planned for 2030, that are expected to discover so many more of these events because of their sensitivity to ultraviolet emissions. And so instead of seeing them as mysterious cows, wasps, 
or Tasmanian devils, in the next few years we might be finally able to discover exactly what's causing them and possibly either confirm that this is intermediate mass black holes or something entirely different. And if it is black holes, this might become our primary window into studying how black holes of very specific sizes seem to interact with their neighbors. We obviously have a lot of examples of smaller black holes, referred to as the stellar mass black holes, and a lot of examples of supermassive black holes, but it's that in-between part that's missing. But this also of course shows us that the universe is way more dynamic than we ever thought. Even after stars explode, and even after they leave some kind of a remnant behind, they can still dominate the environment around themselves and produce events that we never really thought possible until these recent discoveries from the last 10 years. For now though, they are going to remain a little bit mysterious, and we'll definitely come back and discuss this more in some of the future videos. Until then, check out previous videos about these objects in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly or by joining a channel membership that grants you early access. You can also support this channel by buying a wonderful person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.